28-year-old Kirsten Jensen lives just outside Vancouver, Canada. She has a career in medical technology. I always loved science. I had exposure to a lot of marine biology at a very young age, and then I went into science because I just found that that was the greatest way to solve a puzzle. The main focus of my entire career has been to help make a difference in someone's life, whether it be on a singular level or whether it be on a broader medical research level. But science is not her only interest. I developed a love of travel and decided to travel as many places as I could in the world. Anything from tropical beaches to, you know, beautiful castles in Europe. It's early March. Kirsten has just returned from a trip to Belize. I was getting ready for work and noticed that I had a mosquito bite. It was about a quarter inch in diameter, red, inflamed. The mosquito bite was in a weird spot. Um, it was about an inch and a bit from my bikini line. At first, I wasn't really all that concerned because I do get mosquito bites. Um, usually, they stick around for a few weeks. It's not uncommon. Kirsten heads to the office and carries on with her day. But the next morning, she notices something peculiar about the bite. It was a little bit different than any other bite I'd had before. This one had a little hole on the top. The hole is about the size of the head of a pin. I thought it was a bit strange because mosquito bites generally don't have holes on top. But I didn't think too much of it because it just looked red, but it didn't hurt. I was waiting for it to go away on its own. Later in the day, Kirsten finds herself in an awkward situation. I was sitting at work at my desk and it was getting really itchy and I'm sitting there trying to figure out how I'm going to itch this without being, you know, a little bit crude about it. And I did get a chance to scratch it and it was really one of those good scratches where you think that, oh, that's not probably a good idea. A few hours later, she notices something puzzling. If you scratch a mosquito bite, you'd expect there to be a scab of some sort forming, at least a little bit of one, but there wasn't any. It was not healing at all. For the rest of the day, Kirsten tries to hide her scratching. The following morning, she is getting ready for work. I'm in the shower. I go to shave my legs like I normally do. I was noticing that it was pretty inflamed, so I just avoided it altogether and definitely didn't shave near the area because you don't want to inflame the skin more than it needs to be. I was looking at it more and thinking, maybe this is not just a regular mosquito bite. Maybe this is just a simple ingrown hair. An ingrown hair occurs when the hair curls underneath the follicle in the skin. It sometimes occurs in areas that are frequently shaved. For the time being, I, I went to work and, you know, went on with my day and went on with my daily life. But a few days later, a new symptom stops her cold. I was walking down the street. It was a beautiful day out. And all of a sudden, there's this stabbing pain. And I was just incapacitated. I'm the girl walking down the street that all of a sudden doubles over in pain. It felt like a red hot poker. It was just felt like something just stabbed me, hit a nerve, and it was just a very odd feeling I had never had before. There's something completely going wrong with this. This is not just your standard ingrown hair. When I finally was able to stand up, I walked a little bit further, and about three minutes later it happened again, and I doubled over. It just came out of nowhere. And I picked up my cell phone and I called the doctor and said, I need to see you. A few days later, Kirsten's appointment rolls around. I went to see my doctor and I explained the stabbing pain that I had and he said, well, that's not normal. The doctor thought it was just an ingrown hair that likely had gotten infected. When an ingrown hair becomes infected, white blood cells flood the damaged tissue, forming pus. To confirm his suspicion, the doctor recommends an invasive procedure. He said, let's see if I can potentially cut it a little bit to see if we can get the pus out. Kirsten braces herself. He injected me with lidocaine to numb the area. And then he comes and gets a small scalpel and just cuts the very top to see if he can get something coming out of it. I'm watching him slice it, and nothing is coming out. It's just clear fluid. You'd expect with an inflammation like that, you'd see some dead white cells and pus. The doctor thought it was very odd that nothing came out of it. 
As a precaution, the doctor puts Kirsten on a course of antibiotics. Three days later, while getting ready for bed, Kirsten checks on the status of the wound. And I'm like, well, I'll just check in and see if anything's changed. I noticed that there's something white on top, and it's very odd. I wasn't certain, but it almost seemed like something moved. I'm horrified. I was just thought, I, I, am I hallucinating? It's been a really long day at work, and it's 12 hours of work plus commuting. Maybe I'm not seeing something correctly. Maybe I didn't see that. Concerned something more sinister is going on, Kirsten heads to the ER. There, she expresses her fears about the mysterious bump to the on-call doctor. I don't think he fully believed me when I said that I thought I saw movement. He pushed on it with his hands, kind of pushed around it, asked how much pain I had. The whole time I was thinking, am I just being paranoid? Did I see something? Maybe I didn't see what I thought I saw. The doctor said, keep taking the antibiotics. We just think it's a simple abscess that should resolve on its own. I was pretty sure that wasn't what was going on, but I didn't know what it was. Doctors put a bandage on the wound and send Kirsten home. After a sleepless night, she staggers into the living room. I remember quite vividly, it was about 6 AM. I thought, I'm going to take another look. And I lift the bandage off, and I see this little white tube that clearly retracts into my leg. There was no hallucination this time. It clearly retracted. As in, it was there, and it was gone. <laughs> I started screaming. I'm freaking out. I cannot breathe properly. I'm just it's literally hyperventilating. Kirsten rushes right back to the hospital. There, Dr. Sheldon Glazer takes on her case. Kirsten came to our emergency room complaining of a lump on her thigh. On an observation of the lump, there was no movement that I could see. However, he still takes down her medical history. One of the first things he asked me was, OK, where have you been traveling recently? And I said, well, I've been to Belize. For Dr. Glazer, this is the key that leads him to a stunning diagnosis. She had a parasite living inside her. She had a botfly larva. The botfly larva is a maggot that thrives under the skin. Inside Kirsten's body, the maggot burrows into the tissue under her skin. There, it feeds on blood and living cells and grows in size. To prevent itself from being pulled out, the maggot uses a set of jagged spines that hook onto Kirsten's flesh, leading to her raised lesion, irritation, and stabbing pain. I was just horrified it was in my body. I can deal with it in somebody else's body or reading about it in a paper, but in my body, I didn't want it there. Botfly larvae have been known to grow to nearly an inch in length, and they can embed anywhere on the skin. They're typically found on the arms, legs, back, or scalp, but they've also been reported on eyelids, the tongue, and even on genitalia. Dr. Glazer tells Kirsten there's a natural way to get rid of botflies. Eventually, the botfly will exit on its own in about six to 12 weeks to which I said no. I was horrified and terrified at the thought of having to live with anything in my leg for longer than it absolutely needed to be there. Kirsten Jensen has a botfly larva living under her skin, just by her bikini line. Kirsten is unwilling to wait for the creature to crawl out on its own. So Dr. Sheldon Glazer suggests another way to extract the maggot. We covered the wound with petroleum jelly, then put an airtight dressing on top of the petroleum jelly and taped that down. I had no idea what to expect, but almost immediately, the breathing tube was moving around like crazy, and it was spitting out little bits of stuff. Kirsten endures an agonizing 24 hours as she waits for the parasite to die. Then, Dr. Glazer removes the dressing. And there was a little bit of a tubular bit of maggot that was protruding from the top of this lump. We grasped this little bit of tubular maggot end, 
and pulled on it. All of a sudden, this pain. <gasps> and I go, oh, what, what, what did you just do? It was very sharp. It was very sudden. It required a little bit of force because the, the maggot's diameter is a little bit larger than that little hole at the top of the wound. But it came out of the wound. I was shocked that something that large came out of that small of a hole. There's a part of me that was absolutely repulsed by the fact that I had anything inside me, but I was also fascinating that evolution allowed us to have something that lived inside a human with spikes. What makes the botfly so amazing is its unusual reproductive strategy. The botfly hijacks a mosquito in mid-flight and lays its eggs on the mosquito's body using a special glue. When the mosquitoes bite a mammalian host, the heat from the mammal's body causes the glue to melt, and the eggs fall onto the host's skin, where they hatch into larvae. Then, the larvae enter the host's body through a hair follicle or the mosquito bite. Between 5 and 12 weeks later, they crawl out and transform into adult flies. Human botflies are native to Mexico and Central and South America. When we were in Belize, we really tried to make a very interesting vacation. So we started in the jungle, but it was very hot. And before lunch, we were like, let's go in for a swim. And when I got out of the water and wasn't wearing any insect repellent, that's when I got bit. I literally got swarmed by mosquitoes. Before leaving the ER, Dr. Glazer gives Kirsten an unusual present. The maggot was placed in a small, medical container and uh, given to Kirsten as a souvenir. There are all kinds of things that we give to patients as souvenirs of their stay in the emergency room. Uh, this was perhaps one of the weirdest. I named the botfly Bob with the middle name of Roe for a full name of Bob Roe Botfly. Today, Kirsten has fully recovered from her bout with the botfly. And despite this experience, she continues to travel the globe. I've not been back to Belize, but I would absolutely go back because it's a beautiful area. Next time I go to Belize, I'll definitely be sure I wear insect repellent at all times. Human botflies are native to Mexico and Central and South America. When traveling in these regions, the best way to avoid the botfly maggot and other mosquito-borne infections is to wear deep-based insect repellent on all exposed parts of the skin. 